So last we left our breakfast bar saga, I still had to build the bar top and the drawers. So I went to the lumber store and got the material that I needed for the bar tops and the drawers. And I picked out kaya, which is a type of mahogany. And they had some nice 14 foot long pieces that would work for the bar top and the, and the leg on the, the side of the bar top that wraps from the top down to the floor. And I had them cut the 14 foot pieces that I needed into the two shorter links that I would use for the, for the bar top. And what I wanted with a 14 foot piece was to have the 10 foot piece on the top and have that wrap down the side so that the, so that the green would go around the miter and it would look like one big piece with a bend in it. And I got the wood back to the shop and I was checking it out and refiguring out which pieces went to which ends and how the grain would work. And then I measured one of the longer pieces and it looked like I had screwed up what I had told them to cut. <laughs> and I had actually put the cut in the wrong place. So my, my long section wasn't going to quite be long enough and the short section was too long. And there wasn't any extra so even on the very first seconds of this project, I had already made a huge mistake. <laughs> so I actually went back to the lumber store and got some more and brought that back and had it cut in the right place this time and measured it 47 times before I went. But the pieces I brought back, the color just wasn't right. I, I thought I'd check this at the, at the store and I decided that having the two pieces that that didn't quite match is going to look worse than just having a splice in the length of the top. So I went back to my original pieces and worked on those to make the bar top. So I jointed one edge and then I cut the other edge to be parallel with, with that jointed edge. And to make the width of the top I would need, which would be just a little bit less than 18 inches, I needed two pieces to go together. So I rejointed the joint between the two pieces and got that joint to be as perfect as I could. And I used biscuits to hold the joint together while I was gluing it and to give the joint a little more strength. And I've learned it's always good to dry fit a biscuit joint because you don't want to have a whole bunch of glue all over the place and not having it fit together because one of the slots has been cut in the wrong place or you don't quite have enough biscuits or, or something. <laughs> so it's good to do a, a test run before you get the glue out. And then once the glue goes on, the, the work has to go pretty fast with something this big. And while that's drawing, I can cut two narrower pieces that'll go along each edge and those will help thicken up the piece. I figured I wanted something a little bit thicker than an inch and a half. And this was all four quarter material, so it's about an inch. Now the, the second big mistake I made, which lost me a day, <laughs> was that I glued these on the wrong side. And I had even marked the bottom, but had forgotten that I'd marked it. So I just glued them on. And it wasn't until the next day when the glue was set that I turned it over and realized I'd glued it on the wrong side. So I, I planed off these pieces that I glued on and then made a new set and glued those on the right side. Now for the vertical section, I realized after I'd started that I was gonna see the back of this piece on the inside of the breakfast bar where the stools go. So I wasn't going to be able to just put a piece on each edge. I had to make the whole section of this piece thicker. So I glued a piece in the center to fill in that, that space. Then I could finally take the clamps off the main piece and I cleaned up the sides. And then I could plane the two pieces together, which was almost two inches down to a little bit more than an inch and a half. Now the next thing to do is to cut the miter between the horizontal piece and the vertical piece. So what I did was to cut 
cut the miter first and then cut the pieces to final length on the other ends so that my, my final cut wasn't the, the, the difficult miter cut. I could worry about just, just getting the miter cut right and not worry about that plus the length of each piece of wood. My first cut burned a little bit because it's such a, a thick cut. So I went back and because I wasn't at my final length yet, I had just, just a little bit of, of length to play with. I could trim off just a little bit and make that cut a little, a little finer or a little nicer. So for the second miter cut, I actually work this into the process and I, I, I didn't cut off as much as would make the complete cut on the first pass and then I did a second pass to kind of clean up the, the face. With the miter cut made, I could then make the length of each piece the, the final length with a straight cut, which is a little bit easier to do. I would use the big radial arm saw for this, but I don't have it set up yet. So it sits there and watches me do all of this cross-cutting. <laughs> now for the vertical section of the bar top, it has to be cut to fit into the back of the kitchen cabinetry. So I marked what I needed to cut out of that piece. I, I spent a good part of a day figuring out exactly what needed to be removed and then drawing exactly what needed to be removed and doing a, a test piece on the CNC and making sure that fit and what I was doing was actually working before I finally cut the actual final piece. I knew if I, if I screwed this up I would have to go back get a whole new batch of wood and start all over again. <laughs> so there's a section where the countertop fits into, and then there's a section where the lower part of the cabinetry fits into. And I could clean up what I cut on the CNC by hand. And I took it upstairs and it fit perfect the first time. I was lucky. <laughs> then the next thing to do is to make the little extra bit of length for the bar top. So I had cut that off of the vertical piece, and now I can attach it to the horizontal piece. And I'll just use some biscuits for that. Now to clamp this, I could run a clamp down to the end, but the end is the miter, and I didn't want to put a clamp against that sharp point of the miter. I clamped the longer section down to the table, then I clamped another board at the end of the short piece, and I added some wedges between that board and the and the short piece that I'm gluing to the long piece and that that held the joint together while the glue dried and I used my cart to hold the end up so it was drawing flat or straight and I could take apart all the clamps once it's set up and then my, my little end piece that I glued on was a little bit narrower the horizontal piece and the vertical piece were a little bit different widths, so I, I set up the table saw and I just ran everything through it with the same setup so that everything's exactly the same width. And then I can sand the whole top. And this wood isn't real hard, so it, it sanded pretty well. And then some finish. And it's just polyurethane, so real simple. Now the first coat I put on with a brush and then I sanded with a really fine sandpaper. I put on another coat with a brush. And once that dried, it, it, it had a, a roughness to it, almost like there were bubbles in the polyurethane. And the can says to use a brush. But what I did is re-sanded again and applied the finish with a brush. But then I wiped it down with a, with a cloth, like it's a rubbing polyurethane. And that gave me a really nice finish. So I think, I think the key with it is to put it on really thin. Then I can do a biscuit for the miter. And I can bring the pieces in. And I've checked them so many times, they better fit. <laughs> Which they did. Now to glue up the miter, I needed a way to clamp that corner. So what I've seen done is to clamp two 
scrap pieces of wood with a 45 degree angle cut in them. And then you clamp those two pieces of wood together and that holds the joint together. So I got that all set up. But what I realized with my first setup was that the clamps holding the joint together weren't aligned with the joint correctly. They were, they, they were too far into the corner so that they were closing the angle of the miter. So what I did was to cut my scrap pieces of wood down a little bit and then add a piece of plywood to the bottom, like a little fin. So those let me clamp the scrap pieces of wood further away from the corner, but the actual angle that I was going to be clamping the miter together with would be in line with the miter so that the line of force from the clamp goes through the joint. And this seemed to work pretty well. Once I had test fit it, I can then add glue and clamp the whole assembly together. You can see how these clamps now hold the joint together instead of trying to squeeze the angle of the miter. While that dried, I could attach the little piece of trim at the baseboard that's been waiting to go on for eight months now. And then I can take this clamp assembly apart. Now the whole thing should just slide into place. And it's perfect. Now to hold the bar top in place, I just want to use a few screws. I don't want to have any screws that will run across the grain. So I just want one screw at each drawer support, basically. Because if you hold this much width of grain with more than one screw, it'll, it'll tend to expand and crack or shrink and crack. So the bar top and sides are done, and I think I'll stop this video here. Now the drawers are built, but the video isn't put together yet. So I should have that out in the next few days. Thanks for watching.